Today I want to talk about using photographs when we paint. The idea that the photograph should be just a place to start. It's not something we want to just copy literally. But we do want to interpret what we see in the photograph. We want to interpret what the light's doing, the big masses and shapes, with the idea that, that we can arrange them and create a better composition than what the photograph gives us as well as maybe change and increase the contrast, value contrast to create more drama or more uh, strong sense of dark and light. And then color wise, really focus on the idea of pushing color temperature to suggest more sunlight, or in the case of painting on a cloudy day, maybe increase the value contrast between the big shapes. But again, Photograph is just a place to start. We don't want to take it literally. So I have some paintings here I want to talk about and then show the reference also that I painted from and, and kind of go through the thought process of what I'm changing, what I'm thinking uh, to create maybe a better painting. So we'll start with this photograph here. This is in Coral Reef, Southern Utah. I was there last October. So I'm still kind of doing a lot of color sketches, working through a lot of the images. This one, what I'm really focusing on, kind of my center of interest or what draws me to the subject is this area right in here. Got a little bit of the creek, the dark and light shapes of the cottonwood and then the definite shadow pattern in the cliffs. So a lot going on there. A little bit of the creek, but not all the creek, in other words, are really not interested in the foreground creek or from about this side over and then same thing here. So I'm really zooming in to what's important. I don't have to paint the whole photograph. And generally the photograph always gives us too much information. When we use the camera, it makes everything smaller and pushes it back into the background. So I generally want to zoom in more to what's important and that helps me eliminate the surrounding areas that I don't care about or that shouldn't be in the painting. The other thing is where I want to place the horizon line. Here the horizon line is pretty much centered and I need to decide what's important in my painting. Am I more interested in the sky, mountains, and trees, or am I more interested in the foreground? In this case, the river or path or whatever's in the foreground. And if my interest is up here, sky, cliff, trees, then I'm going to place the horizon line a lot lower than maybe what's in the reference. That gives me more room up on top here to make things big enough, increase the size of things to make them work better. It gives me less foreground, but that's what I'm giving up. I think typically the, our default is just to paint what's exactly there. And we really need to compose a lot better. This tree and cliff and creek are too centered. So I want to move them off center and I want to cut out most of the creek and just leave a little bit because my focal point or what interests me is the cliff and the tree. So here's my painting and um, you can see my horizon line is dropped below half. So I have more room for a cliff and trees. I've also added a uh, sheep herder with some sheep, a lot of sheep in southern Utah. And my focal point is more, again, the figure and the horse and the sheep, but also the tree and the cliff as well, especially the intense colors that I have in the tree and uh, the strong shadow pattern in the cliff. Foreground, sky, and the surrounding areas are a bit more muted to make these colors, the tree and the spots of color on the horse really stand out. If we want a painting that's more colorful, we need to add a lot of grayed or muted colors to the painting. That way the stronger colors will stand out and make a statement. If we just use a lot of bright colors, then everything's screaming at us. But if we want these colors, like the yellow, yellow, orange, yellow, green tree, and the spots of red and blue on the horse and rider, if I want that to really make a statement and stand out, I'm going to mute a lot of the colors in the painting. And I mute them generally by mixing the complements. So if I want to mute the bank on the river, that kind of orange color, I'm adding blue to it. 
The river itself is kind of a violet, so I'm adding orange to that or yellow orange to mute it. The sky is muted with a tiny bit of orange. So in order for colors to really to make a statement, brighter colors, you have to have a lot of grayer colors in them. Next photograph here, this is Mount Carmel, also in southern Utah. I believe it's Johnson Canyon. It was right off Johnson Canyon Road, so I'm assuming it's Johnson Canyon. And this is midday. I usually don't do a lot of photographing midday because the light's fairly flat, but this day we had a lot of uh, cloud shadows, a lot of cloud patterns in the sky, casting shadows on the ground, so it created this nice dark foreground and cliff on the left and left a lot of this hill in the background really sunlit. So a lot of drama there. And my focus is kind of right in here. That's where the darkest darks are, lightest lights. I just have to make sure these darks are maybe downplayed a little bit so that this area stands out a bit more. Now, technically, the foreground darks, my darkest dark, should be in here. But we're the artist. We can decide uh, what the heck we're going to do. So I want the focus to be here, so I'm going to put my darkest darks in the middle ground. Kind of breaks the rules a little bit. But rules are made to be broken once you understand them, I think. So Also, I want to uh, push the shadows a bit cooler in the cliff over here. It helps to really make a decision on what color I want shapes to be, shapes and areas, rather than just looking at the photograph and mixing and mixing until I match a color. It's much better to look like right in here, I'm going to say a blue-green. And that tells me I'm going to start with a bluish green, maybe Viridian. Then I'm going to mute it slightly, make it the right value. So start with a definite color. That way your, your painting is going to have more color to it. And it won't look photographic. If we have a photograph and we just look at it and start mixing and mixing until we think we match what we see, that's when colors get muddy. Uh, they don't harmonize as well. And the painting can look more photographic. So in my painting here, I'm pushing the hill here, more of a reddish violet and violet, pushing the sunlit cliff more yellow and yellow orange. And of course, really strong uh, value contrast, really separating the values a lot more so that that cool area and warm area, that warm and cool contrast really vibrates as well as the dark and light contrast which creates a lot more drama as well. A lot of colors in here, the shadow in the foreground is a big shadow. It's, it's from the from the clouds and the bigger the shadow the more ambient light comes in and, and gives us more light more color in these shadows typically your shadows don't have a lot of color like the shadows on the trees here but the bigger the shadow gets like on the hillside on the uh, foreground then you're going to get a lot more ambient light and color i did add a couple of barns and trees in here kind of as a secondary uh, focal point but this is still kind of my center of interest now this one is also in capitol reef southern utah late in the afternoon a lot of shadows again the foreground's in shadow sunlight in the middle ground and then shadow in the background and I, if i can set up those four or five large masses it's going to make it a lot easier to paint because all this detail will really confuse you when you're looking at all the foliage, all the dappled light. It can get confusing, but if I can reduce things to four to eight large shapes, get them the right value, then the painting's going to work. Always work on, on some level. It's when we get bogged down in the detail and start to see too many values and too many shapes that color becomes impossible. So in my painting here, I really push the color. This is a color study. I want to do this bigger at some point. So I did one where I've used a lot of strong color. I did mute the shadows in the foreground a little bit, but there's a lot of stronger color in there. And then I did another color study that I ended up not keeping where everything is more muted and kind of compared the two. But I like the stronger color. Um, again, I have the foreground shadow, the sunlight in the middle ground. And then I reduce the background to just a simple, darker, cooler color, just to make it stay back. That's all that matters about this violet and this darker area in there, is that it stays back in the background. And the violet, the dark violet in the background, makes the lighter yellow, yellow-orange foliage come forward. And the darker darks makes the foreground come forward yet even more. Plus, most of the details is in the foreground 
which also makes it come forward. If you want to think, make things come forward, add more detail in the foreground, less detail in the back, and that's going to create the idea of depth. Also, the general rule that things get cooler as they recede is right, and warmer as they come forward. But here we have a cloud shadow, or not a cloud shadow, a shadow from the trees. So the foreground's now in shadow, and the middle ground is warmer. And you'd say, well, how come the middle ground doesn't come forward? It's because I have the dark trunks here. That's the darkest dark, as well as some darks in here. And that keeps that forward, as well as more detail in front and simplifying the middle ground. Middle ground colors are pretty bright, pretty strong. But again, the dark value, the tree trunks and the accents and the detail in the foreground kind of keeps it in the middle ground. Now this one is in uh, Wyoming. This is the Shoshone River, close to Yellowstone. You can follow the Shoshone River from Cody, Wyoming on into Yellowstone. Beautiful river, just have to watch out for bears. And here this is early in the morning and a lot of drama in this photograph. A lot of strong dark and light pattern. The sun's coming from the left and the shadows are falling to the right. A lot of good strong uh, temperature contrast here. I, I don't have to change the color as much or, or push it as much. I generally push the shadows a bit cooler, sunlit areas a bit warmer to create that temperature contrast. But this has a really nice feel of warm and cool. Now I do want to zoom in. My focal point is more kind of like right in this area. So I'm going to eliminate a lot of everything else because it's just not necessary. Really decide what's important, what drew you to paint that subject, and then see what you can eliminate. See how much you can zoom in and get rid of the stuff that's around the, the focal point. And again, I have a, a shadow in the foreground here. It allows that tree to really stand out against the shadow in the background. In my painting, this again, a small sketch I want to do bigger. Cut out the foreground river and just have a bit of the creek there. But really pushing, simplifying the shape in the background to allow the trees to stand out. The uh, yellow cottonwoods, yellow, yellow green, and then the green pine trees that are sunlit really stand out against the darker shadow. And that's pretty much what I saw in the photograph. So I didn't change it as much. What I did leave out was all this little tiny bright light tops of the trees that stand out. If I were to put those in the painting, it would break up this big, I did put like three or four. But if I were to put, you know, 10, 12, 15 of them, or probably 25 or 30 were in there, that would break up this shadow pattern too much. And it wouldn't have the same impact of being a dark shape that the sunlit pine tree stands out against. So keeping that simple and pushing the value maybe a bit darker and cooler allows the sunlit areas to pop a bit more. And I tend to go for extremes too when there's this much sunlight. You know, the dark shadows and the light lights. Try and stay away from half tones when you're painting bright sunlit days. And by half tones, I mean the value between the dark and light. I don't mean a half tone light or a half tone shadow. I kind of reduce things to three values, a light area, a shadow area, and then a half tone in between. Then I could add another value in the shadow if I want or another value in the light. But those three simple values are going to give me a strong dark and light contrast as well as form. And when I block in a painting, I stick with just the simple dark and simple light first and then later add the half tone because the half tone will be a little too dark to show the sun as bright as it is but the light won't the light you know if i get the lights in there lighter or as light as i see them and the darks maybe a bit darker i'm going to get that strong contrast that's going to give me a sense of light now on a cloudy day it'd be different cloudy day we don't have any of that bright intense sunlight hitting the objects, so the lights are a bit more of a halftone. Same thing with the shadows, there's not those big shadow patterns that we get on a bright sunlit day. So more halftone on a cloudy day. And my contrast is between the big shapes. So if this is a cloudy day, which it's not, my contrast would be the shapes of these foreground trees against the background hills, or the shape of the trees against the gravel and the water. I want to separate those values. I wouldn't have the strong cast shadows and bright sunlight that I do have on a sunny day. So, But since they're there, I want to push that. I want to start with those extremes and capture that strong, intense light. And again, just eliminate what's not necessary. 
also added more uh, blue to everything in the background. The orange dirt here has a tiny bit of blue in it. The bluish green trees in the background have more blue in them than the foreground trees. And that makes them all stay back into the background. That kind of blue atmospheric stuff that you, know, you add to whatever's in the background is going to keep it back there. Whereas in the foreground lights, I'm not adding anything like that. I'm keeping the colors stronger, lighter, and a bit more saturated. Well, that will do it. Thanks for watching. And if you would like and subscribe, that would be great. And we will see you next time.